Good evening, everyone. Truly, it is a blessing to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. I want y'all to pray with me tonight. My sinuses kicked up on me. I took four Alka-Seltzer Plus and Zerotech and still bothered me. So if I be blowing in can on the pier, y'all, y'all overlook it. Amen. Amen. Before I get started, I want to again thank Right Hill Baptist Church for having me to come in this week. Thank the pastor. Also, I want to thank Reggie, Mike, uh, Leland, Lee, I mean, um, I'm missing somebody. But I thank all y'all. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thank all y'all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, again, I come to thee as humble as I know how at this moment, again, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And Lord, I ask to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And Lord, I give you all the glory. Exit all in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Again, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And Steve. <laughs> hmm. How you know that? <laughs> you let me, Steve? Thank you. <laughs> Should have told the other one to let let me be, let let me beat them too. I think it was a setup. Amen, amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, would you turn with me, please, to the Book of Luke, the eighth chapter. Book of Luke, the eighth chapter, beginning at the twenty-second verse. And when you get there, would you acknowledge by saying, "Amen." Luke, the 22nd, 8th chapter, the 22nd verse. If you're not there, say, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, amen, amen. The scripture read, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Amen. And if you want a subject this evening, or a topic I would simply use in jeopardy with Jesus. In jeopardy with Jesus. Regardless, church, of who you are, regardless of how right and righteous you try to be, one thing that is evidently clear within this world that sooner or later trouble is coming. And I learned, my brothers and my sisters, that all of my trouble doesn't come from my devilishness. It does not come from the devil, but some things actually come from the divine. I learned that some of my troubles don't come because I've been wicked, but, be, but actually because I've been worshiping. Some of my troubles don't come because I've been sinful, but actually because I've been sacred. There are some situations that come in my life, not because I've been full of the devil, but actually because I've been delivered. There are some things that are divinely designed for me and you to go through. Now, in order to determine 
in my own personal life, if I'm going through it because of my wickedness, or am I going through it because of my worship, when I'm out of the will of God, that's because the devil and me. But if I'm in the will of God and trouble come, that's because I'm actually doing what the Lord told me to do. The different church between the two is, when my trouble come because of the devil in me, it's punishment. But when I come through trouble, when I'm in the Lord's will, it's preparation. Don't miss me right there. Everything I go through, every trial and tribulation is not because the Lord is whipping me, but some things I go through is actually because the Lord is preparing me. He's getting me ready for what he got in store for me. But what you got to realize is that everything that I go through in preparation, he does not prepare me for a blessing with a blessing, but he actually prepare me for a blessing with a burden. In other words, in order for me to be strong enough to stand, I actually got to go through some, something that's going to knock me down. Hmm? If I want God to bless me with some patience, to help me with my anger, God will not put me in pleasant, peaceful pasture. But in order for me to grow some patience, he got to place me in a position that's going to make me mad. Hmm? God does not teach me how to handle money when I got two million, but he teach me how to handle two million when all I got is two dollars. Huh? Because if I can learn how to handle two dollars, I can learn how to handle it when I get the two million. You didn't catch me, did you? He does teach me how to take care of Bentley with a Bentley, but he teach me how to take care of Bentley with a beat up bird. Huh? Because God knows if I'm responsible enough to take care of the beat up bird, he don't worry about me when I get in the Bentley. Amen. Come on up in here now. Something just hit my head. I got to give it to you right quick. Brother, uh, I want to say his name was Leo. Leo. Leo? Y'all know, first night I got here, I told y'all, Pastor told me to bring a receipt back and he's going to give me my Mercedes. I told him I was going to bring him. I was told y'all I was going to bring him a receipt for the Mercedes and give it to him. But you know what? Somebody blessed me with a Mercedes today. Ain't that Leo? He blessed me with a miniature Mercedes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. There's, there are some songs in my life that I'm going through so the Lord can compare me while I'm going through it. But the good news is, church, the good news about it is, if I'm in the will of God while I'm going through it, it's really not I'm going through it, it's really we are going through it. In actuality, the disciples should have been worried if Jesus would have stayed on the show. They had the right to be scared. If Jesus would have put them on the boat and pushed them off. But the truth of the matter is, it was not they were on the boat, it was them and Jesus on the boat. So the common thing about a storm is, it's not that I'm in a storm, it's we in a storm. And as long as Jesus is in my storm with me, therefore sooner or later, if God got me in it, God gonna get me out of it. So how, church, how do you deal with it when the reason you're going through what you're going through is God's fault? Huh? How do you trust the God that the reason I'm crying right now, I was ju just doing what he told me to do? Huh? Oh, I know this disciples and me can't be the only one in this place that can testify there's some stuff you never would have went through if you wouldn't have been listening to the Lord in the first place. Huh? I mean, there are some people you never would have had to fool with if the Lord wouldn't have told you to, huh? There's some burdens you never would have had to bear if the Lord wouldn't have told you to. But if you expository look at the scripture, you will understand that the disciples did not choose to get in the boat. Jesus put them on the boat. The disciples did not choose the direction. Jesus said, 
let us go to the other side. And since Jesus was the only one on the boat that was omnipotent, that knew everything, not only did he know they were going to get in the, on the boat, not only did he know they were going to get in the ship, but he also knew they were going to get on a storm. The good thing, church, the good thing about God is if God know how you got in, then only God know how you're going to get out. So how do you trust the God to deliver me when he's the one that put me in the limo in the first place, huh? How do I expect God to wipe my eyes when he's the reason for my tears, huh? How do I expect God to give me a smile when he's the one that's causing me to frown? How do I expect God to heal my body when he's the one that allowed me to get sick in the first place? How do I expect God to deliver me when the <clears throat> fact of the matter is I never would have been in this rut in the first place if I wouldn't have been following his direction? Well, I got three things I need to tell you. First of all, <clears throat> do not misconceive his calmness for lack of concern. Let me say that one more time. Do not misconceive God's calmness for lack of concern. They were in the boat. The storm was raging on top of the boat. The water that was under the boat was not getting in the boat. The boat that was once supposed to be floating is not sinking. But the problem is, while they're sinking on top, Jesus is sleeping on the bottom. It would look like Jesus didn't care about the situation. But it wasn't that he didn't care. He was just calm down. Because the good news is, Jesus' calmness ought to make you calm. Yeah. You shouldn't get worried when God is calm. What ought to make you worry when God is worried? Huh? Well, church, why was he sleeping? He was sleeping, first of all, because they were under his agenda. He knew what was going on before he left the show. Huh? He knew the problem. He knew the benefits. He knew the situation. He knew the burden. He knew the ups and the downs. He's the one that controls the navigation. So why should God be worried? It might caught you by surprise, but it didn't catch him by surprise. He knew you were going to be broke before you even got there. He knew you were going to be sick before you went to the hospital. He knew you were going to have the operation before you got the diagnosis. He knew you were going to get lied on before the enemy rose up against you. He knew you were going to get to divorce court before you even walked down the aisle. Huh? Because I'm a child of God. I'm under the Almighty's agenda. He knows exactly, church, what's going to come my way. I just got to stick to the plan. Yeah, 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 regardless. Regardless of how rough, regardless of how it looked, regardless of how bad it looked, God got a plan. His plan may be for you to get sick, huh? Because here's the good news. There's some stuff you never would have got if you never went through what you went through. What you mean, preacher? In other words, I never would have shouted about him healing my body if I never would have got sick. In the first place, huh? I would have never shouted about turning my enemies into footstools if my enemies wouldn't have never rose up against me. I never would have had a shadow of God making a way out of no way if I never would have got caught up in a tight spot and didn't know which way to go. You got to thank God because whatever you're going through is in the plan. So thank God. Now, another thing you need to understand. If Jesus would have been running around the boat, they should have been scared. But since Jesus was calmed down, his calmness ought to make you calm. In other words, Jesus never moved in the Bible. He did more talking than he did walking. Hmm? If you actually look at the Bible, huh, and look at the movements of Jesus, you will actually understand that Jesus only got up a few times. He got up one time when he created heaven and earth. After he created heaven and earth, he sat back down. And for the next six days, he just spoke up everything that came into existence. At the end of six days, he got up again and said, let us make man after our likeness of our own image. Went back, sit down. 
Didn't get up again until Adam sinned in the garden. Got up, walked through the cool of the garden, asked Adam where I die, put Adam out, closed them up, got them together, went back and sit down. He didn't get up again until he was born in Bethlehem as a Jew. Stayed there 33 years. And after he stayed here 33 years, died on the cross, resurrected on Mount Galilee, got on the cloud, said, I'm going back and sit down on the right-hand side of my father, and I'm not getting up again until I come back to get you. So therefore, church, since I know God been sending down ever since the resurrection, the only thing I need to do when I'm going through my trouble is to see God's location. And if God is still sitting down, everything is all right. In other words, if your problem, if your problem won't make God get up early, then you go, you got to calm down. Because he got everything under control. Not only should it give you comfort, it ought to give you confidence. It ought to let you know that since God ain't worried, I'm not worried. Then That's why Paul described it as a peace of God that passes all understanding. It ain't that you and God don't understand. It's that everybody that's watching you can't understand. The reason why it passes all understanding because they see the problem, but they can't understand your peace in the problem. They see the problem, but they can't understand your peace while you're in the problem. How in the world can you smile when everything is going wrong? How in the world can you shout as messed up at your house is? How in the world can you have joy when you ought to be pulling your hair out? They think you front. They think you got a camouflage on. They think you're just putting on a good show. But the truth of the matter is, you got Jesus in you, and if Jesus got me in this thing, Jesus is going to get me out of it. It's just my preparation for my promotion. It's like, if I can't get to where I'm going till I get through with what he's sending me through. Secondly, 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 church, don't turn a temporary storm. Y'all still with me? Don't turn a temporary storm into a test of your faith. The storm was raging. Everything was sinking. They did the right response. They went and woke up Jesus. But after the right response, they made the wrong reaction. They said, "Cares thou not that we perish? What you got to realize is that we is exclusive, not inclusive. In other words, they said, but they, they said, we, but they didn't mean all of us. They meant we perish the disciples and you still sleeping. Hmm? What you got to understand is your weeks ought to be inclusive enough to understand that if God got me in this, God ain't going to stay down too long. It's not I'm sick, it's we sick. It's not I'm sad, it's we sad. It's not I'm broke, it's we broke. And as far as I know, God ain't going to stay sick, broke, or sad too long. So if I just stick with Jesus, the same God that put me in this, it's the same God going to pull me out of it. You're missing me, ain't you? You're missing me, ain't you? It was not only... It was, not, it was not that it was just Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and God in the fiery furnace. And God ain't going to stay hot mm, too long. That's when they got in, God got them right back out. You still ain't catching me, is you? It was not that it was just Ezekiel and a valley full of dry bones down in the valley, but it was Ezekiel, a valley full of dry bones, and God in the valley. And God ain't going to stay around dead stuff mm. too long, huh? Don't you worry about your situation. Whatever you're going through, it ain't I'm going through, it's we going through. And if we going through, God sooner or later is going to do what? Get me out. They made the right response, but wrong reaction. But then, church, they also needed to retain revelation. 
The revelation wasn't on the ship. The revelation was on the shore because he gave them the revelation before the ship even got started. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Now, here is our problem. We want to have chaos and then communication. But that ain't how God works. He gives you communication, then you got chaos. That's why he'll make you a promise. Then after the promise comes a problem. Hmm? Because the only thing you got to do in the midst of the problem is to remember the promise that he already made you. You ain't feeling me in here. I'm going to have to get up. You got to understand, church, that the only thing the disciples had to do was retain the revelation that Jesus gave them on the seashore. Oh, I know the wind was blowing. I know the water was raging, but the only thing they had to do was look north, south, east, and west, and when they didn't see any seashore, they should have known by then this journey ain't over with. I can't die here because if I die here, God just lied to me, and God said, we're going to the other side. Why are you worried what you're going through right now? If God made you a promise before you got in it on what he's going to do for you, you just got to remember what he told you before you even got started. Now, why did he just say the other side? Why didn't he just tell them what they were going to encounter on the journey? What Jesus did, Jesus gave them the information on what they could handle. You hear me? The reason God don't indulge you with all the information is because some stuff you never would have done or even started if he had more information. That's why, that's why he just gives you the information on what you can handle. See, there's some stuff, church, I like to call in my own personal theology philosophy. I like to call Christ classified information. See, y'all realize in our government, we have an agency called the CIA, huh? which is the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, it's their job, Pastor, to find every threat, every room, trace down every terrorist that may or may not be a threat to the United States. Now, there are some information that everybody in the, in the whole agency knows. But there is other information that only the hierarchy knows. And that is char characterized and labeled as classified information. Because that information, you got to have a clearance to know. Because everybody can't handle that much information. There is some stuff in your life that is under classified information. You can't handle Christ classification. You don't have enough level to get that clearance. So God gives you the information on what you can handle. Let me try to tell it to you another way. Put yourself in the disciples' shoes. Instead of being 12, you're the 13th. If Jesus that day on the shore, Brother Brock, wouldn't have given them the general information they could handle, but gave them the specific, he would have said, okay, boy, we're going to go on the boat. We're going to head to the other side. While we headed to the other side, I'm going to go on the bottom of the boat, but out in the middle of the sea, a storm is going to rain. Wind is going to start blowing, and the water that's under the boat is going to get in the boat, and you're going to be sinking on top of the boat, and I'm going to be sleeping at the bottom of the boat. And before you start sinking, you got to get from the top to the bottom to the bottom to the boat to get me to the top of the boat. Then I'm going to say, peace be still. The wind and the water are going to obey me, and we're going to make it to the other side. Now, check this out, church. Peter wouldn't have had to say nothing that day. I would have beat him to the punch. I would have said, Jesus, if we got to go through all that, 
just to get to the other side, then why don't we just stay on this side? <laughs> Come on, be honest with me, church. There are some of you who wouldn't have never walked down the aisle if you knew being married was going to be like this. Huh? <laughs> There are some of you who wouldn't have never joined the church if you would have known you had to deal with hypocrites, backbiting, backstabbing, lying, cheating folk that you got to deal with, huh? You would have never made your first friend if you have known that a friend can turn into an enemy. God gives you the information on what you can handle. He gives you the beginning and he gives you the end. And the only thing you need to know that God got control of the middle. Because you can't handle middle information. See, everybody in here know how you started. You were born of a woman, and everybody know in here know how you're going to leave here. There's a point in time for man to be born, and a point in time for man to die. But you don't know what's going to happen between birth and burial. That's the mystery of the middle. And if you told, if, if, if he told you you're going to make it while you're worried about it, you're going to make it. Thirdly, and lastly, you got to let him take full control. Notice, I didn't say let him take control, but full control. See, some of us like for God to be in control, what I like to call in my own personal theology again. We want him to be our cruise control. We want him to handle the speed of us getting there, but we want to handle the direction. Huh? But in order for God to handle your situation, you got to let him have full control. Well, why did you let him have full control? I'm glad you asked. Because it's his stuff. Huh? Do I need to say that again? It's his stuff. It was his wind. It was his water. It was his wood that made the boat. Matter of fact, everything was doing what it was supposed to be doing except his disciples. The wind was blowing. It's supposed to blow. The water was raging and flowing. It's supposed to flow. The boat was floating. It's supposed to flow. But the disciples were supposed to be believing, but they were doubting. Sometimes the reason you're in the situation you're in is that everybody else around you are doing what they are supposed to be doing except you. Come on, tell me, tell me why are you so caught off guard because they lied on you? That's why they call them liars, huh? Why are you upset because they stab you in the back? That's why they call them backstabbers, huh? Why are you so upset because the person came to church, then they went back in the world? That's why they call them backsliders, huh? Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing except you. You are supposed to be believing that God can do anything but fail. Now, you declared that you're believing, but here's my problem with you. If you believe in while you're worried. Huh? Because worrying is a sign of doubt. Because if you wear it, if God is going to do it, and whenever you put if when God is around, that is always a sign of doubt. Because my pastor told me God is not a God of if, God is a God of shall. And whenever I say shall, I'm believing God is going to do whatever he promised me he is going to do. Not if I get well, is if I shall, help Lord, get well. It's not if I come out, it is that I shall come out. That's why the Bible say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Huh? That's why the Bible say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Huh? The Bible said, bless the day that mourn, for they shall be comfort. The Bible said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The Bible says, and my God, oh my God, shall supply all my needs according to his riches 
and glory. Why are you worried about it when you ought to be living in shell? Quit walking around roaring and start believing. Maybe somebody here don't know what he did for you. Maybe you forgot. Maybe you haven't heard about it. Can I tell you what it is? It was one Friday. One Friday. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. They pierced him in his side. Put a crown on his head. He died. Put him in Joseph's new tomb. The devil, the demons, and started running around dancing saying, they got him. They got him saying, grave, can you hold him? Grave said, don't worry about me. Everybody I get, I hold on to. The devil came back, sir, and said, Grave, do you still have Jesus? Grave said, let me call the row. I got Adam, and I got Eve. I got Cain, and I got Abel. Ain't he all right, church? I got Seth, and I got Abraham. I got Isaac. And I got Joseph. I got Joseph and I got Moses. I got Caleb and Joshua. I got Ruth and Esther. I got Samuel and Solomon. I got Israel and Nehemiah. I got Job and Daisy. I got Isaac and Ezekiel. I got Daniel and Jose. I got Joel and Amos. I got Obadiah and Jonah. I got Micah and Nahum. I got Rebecca and Zephyrphi. I got Haggai and Zechariah. And I got Jesus. Well, Sunday morning, church, the devil came back again. He said, grave. The grave said, had his head in his lap. The devil said, what happened, grave? The grave said, ain't no need of you asking me. Because I don't know. It was early this morning, just before sunrise. It was a rumbling and a tumbling, a shaking and a quaking. Jesus got up. I said, Jesus got up, church. He's all right. Rose to victory. He took the stain out of death. Jesus raised his right hand. He said, I got all power. All power in my hand. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right, church? He got all power in his hand. Always just call on the name of Jesus. He's all right. I said, he's all right, church. God bless you. He's all right. He's better. He's better than good. Amen. God bless you. Right here, y'all keep me in your prayer. And I'll do the same for you. God bless you.